of innovation. And by Dr. Pepper, the one fans crave. And by 76, we're on the driver's side. Thanks, Jim. Hey, you mentioned that loss to Colorado State, but let's talk about the conditions of that. It was 117 degrees on field and 5,000 feet elevation. I talked to Coach Gary Anderson about it, and he said he refuses to let those conditions be an excuse for the way his team played. He said his team right now is a mixture of two emotions, and that's anger and excitement. For Portland State, that's a scary thought. Portland State had a little bit of a trek getting here today. They woke up at about 5.30 a.m., but if I learned one thing about Barney Ball this week, those are the kind of situations that this team thrives in. I talked to Coach Bruce Barnum right before the game. He said regardless of how they arrived, they are ready to play this football game. Back to you guys. It's the fifth meeting all time between Oregon State and Portland State. Oregon State won the toss but deferred. This will be Khalil Dawson at the three-yard line for the Vikings of Portland State. He's out just across the 20-yard line. Portland State played last week as well at BYU and lost 20-6. to The quarterback, Jelani Eason, making his first collegiate start. Nine months ago, this guy was playing in the high school playoffs down in Southern California. Numbers weren't great. 16 of 36, 134. He threw a touchdown and a pick. But listen, there's going to be growing pains, and there were some flashes of greatness. They talk about this guy having the wow factor. Yeah, and he's just got to cut it loose today. And you know, He's got his first game under his belt. And today, it's just a matter of focusing on his skills and ability. They go from the pistol. That's Aquan Summers. Just behind Eason. Eason fakes and rolls and was under pressure right away, but he's able to find a man open at the 30-yard line. Well, that's a nice play by the by the rookie. Under pressure, he turned. You know, that, that play fake is supposed, supposed to keep people off him, but it didn't work, did it? That was a really good play fake. He hit the ball right by his hip, just like he's coached, and then delivered a ball on time with a defender in his face. And I think that shows some of the composure that the coaching staff from Portland State was talking about when they were talking about Jelani Eason. Charlie Tamopea with the catch of the tight end who had a great game last week at BYU. You're going to see and hear him all day long. Again, it's Summers. This time he gets the handoff, bounces it outside. Outside the hash mark and a big gainer across midfield. And he's finally run out at the Oregon State 40. Oh, this guy's not big. He's 5'9", but he is fast. Well, and one thing that Oregon State d defensive coaching staff said that they can't allow to happen is to break, contain, and have Portland State beat you on the outside there. Great blocking up front and a nice first down run. 26 yards on the carry last week. He only had 55 for the entire game. Rolls again. Eason with time and a man wide open down the hash mark. Touchdown, Portland State. Just like that. It's Kraft, the backup quarterback, who has moved to wide receiver. Well, you're going to see Josh Kraft here run a brilliant double move. He faked out every defender on the defense. Just a, a great move there. And then a, a nicely delivered ball by Jelani Eason to the receiver that he was battling with in, all through fall camp to be the starting quarterback. 42 yards on the catch and carry by Kraft. And Eason knew he had him. And Eason rolled softly to the right. He just delivered that ball because there was no gave around. Brosio, who missed the PAT last week, breaking a string of 48 straight for Portland State. And this time the freshman misses again. Well, they said he has the wow factor. Three plays, 79 yards. It took just over a minute. Portland State on top, 6-0.
Galani Eason just put Portland State on the board. It took just over a minute. You know, look, they've talked about this guy being an old soul and how important he is to this offense. He looked good at times last week. That was the best play he's had in his collegiate career. He, he just lived up to everything that we heard the coaching staff say about him this week. I mean, he, he, the, the, those plays weren't easy. He had defenders in his face, and he delivered accurate passes. And, yeah, the touchdown pass was a little underthrown, but it was a good move by Josh Kraft to cut it up and find the end zone. Thomas Chubinasu will kick off for Portland State with a surprising early lead. Remember, a lower division team now against a Pac-12 school in its own yard. Octavius Pierce is back for Oregon State. Bobbles it at the 8, picks it up, cuts back to the middle of the field and doesn't get to the 20. So it's been a good start for Portland State. And so let's the take, touchdown. Let's take a look here. This is Josh Kraft right here in the slot. Keep your eyes on him. Jelani Eason's going to go take the snap and watch this double move. Patience. That's the key to double moves is patience. Josh Kraft He's a senior. He's a great route runner. He has patience on the double move and beats the Oregon State defense, the entire defense, for a long touchdown pass. So the freshman quarterback, Chelani Eason, starts well for Portland State. And now it's time for the new quarterback at Oregon State, Jake Luton, to answer. Last week at Colorado State, 27 for 43. He did throw for over 300 yards, a couple of touchdowns, and then a trio of interceptions. But that was later in the game when Oregon State was well behind. Yeah. Ryan Nall first touch. Offensive coordinator Kevin McGiven told us he really wants to establish the run game early. I think we're going to see a lot of Ryan Nall, but there's the quarterback right there, Jake Luton. As I mentioned in the open, big kid, six foot seven, all of six foot seven, really powerful arm. At times, overthrew some wide open receivers last week. It's just about calming down and just letting it rip. Last year at Ventura Community College down in California, he was a Tuco All American through for about 55% breaking the tackle. That's a first down. Thomas Tyner off one tackle. Thomas Tyner, second effort, yards after contact, move the chains. Let's go down to Cameron Irwin. I'll tell you, Thomas Tyner is a, is a really explosive guy, a big time high school recruit here in Oregon, went to or University of Oregon, uh, then quit football and made his way back here to Corvallis. Yeah, a couple of guys were on that same team at the University of Oregon that are in this game, but they're wearing different color hats today. Drag route across the middle, caught at the 35. Hodgins, and he's finally driven out across the 45-yard line. Good catch and a good second effort. So we've seen the Beavs showing some fight. Isn't that what Gary Anderson talked about? We need to be edgy. We need to be edgy, and we need to break tackles. We need to make plays on the perimeter, and that's what we're seeing so far. Good start here for Oregon State's offense. And Isaiah Hutchins, a fast kid, only a freshman from Oakwood, California. It's the hurry up, but they won't rush. Luton now. Hands back to Nall. Tries the right side. Give him two. Last year, Ryan Nall had 13 rushing touchdowns, and they all came here at Research Stadium. He's had seven career 100-yard games, including last week. Null stays in, four receivers in the pattern. Luton has good protection, throws to Null, but throws it out in front of him and at his feet. Yeah, that, that's one of those passes when you're a starting quarterback in the Pac-12, you just have to make. That's that's pitch and catch. You know, and that's, I see, you know, what we're, we're seeing here is Kevin McGiven, the offensive coordinator, really trying to get Jake Luton in rhythm with some short passes, and he'd like to have that one back. We saw Portland State go to its tight end, Noah Tangiai. It's been great for Oregon State. Remember last year he was injured early in the season, but he had a big game at Colorado State with seven catches, so keep an eye out for 81, the tight end. There's the drag route again. That's Timmy Hernandez who scored the touchdown early in the game at Colorado State. And just coming underneath the coverage. And this offense and Jake Luton, do, they do a great job with crossing routes. They had success last week against Colorado State. Timmy Hernandez comes up big again, as you mentioned, Jim. Last week he had that 39-yard touchdown uh, catch at Colorado State. Take the replay right here. Uh, just just no defenders 
all the linebackers drop out of coverage. Timmy Hernandez against man coverage has a lot of green grass in front of him. And that was a nice nice toss by the quarterback. Luton did exactly what he's supposed to. Hand off inside, Artavius Pierce. Now they want to get Nall about, what, 20 carries is what they were talking about today, but they want to move it around. They, we've already seen Tyner with a touch today, and now Pierce gets his first call. But these guys are going to be involved in the mix. And at times, we're going to see two backs. Yeah, the, the game plan for Oregon State's offense is to use a lot of misdirection to get linebackers out of their fits. Luton's got a rhythm right now. Checks over to the sideline. Again, four receivers, and Pierce to his right. And he throws it to him. Pierce makes the first guy miss. Get right at the stick, and wins the first down. Just short of the 15-yard line. As I mentioned before, it, it, it's just about breaking tackles. It's getting your playmakers the ball in space and letting them make plays. And that's one thing we didn't really see last week at Colorado State. That's a nice run right there by Artavius Pierce making one, two, three guys miss and picking up the first down. Pierce, part of the 2016 Pac-12 All-Freshman team. Sophomore from Florida. Oregon State's had a lot of players come out of Florida. Rogers Brothers. And off to Nall. Offensive line is doing a great job right now down to the five-yard line. They're just blowing Portland State right off the point of contact. Nall didn't even encounter a defensive player until he was five yards downfield. Yeah, and he didn't even think about making a move. He just tried to bowl over the, the, the linebacker here. And I think this is when Gary Anderson said, we want to play angry. Look at him up front, dominating the line of scrimmage. Ryan Nall running hard. I think that exemplifies exactly the emotion that they'd like to play with. Ball's loose. Five turnovers last week for Oregon State. Every conversation we had with the Oregon State coaching staff started with, we can't have five turnovers this week. Yeah, uh, tur turnovers will uh, you'll lose ball games that way. That, that time, Nall just got a little bit lazy with holding the football. Once you're in contact, you got to put two hands on the football. He is a good running back, a junior veteran guy. He knows better than that. So after driving 70 yards now, they run into some trouble inside the red zone, inside the 10. It's a third down and four. They were only 37% 10th in the conference last year in this situation. Luton throws, open receiver, right at the one-yard line. It's a catch, but it's not a touchdown. And Pierce got rocked, but he held on. And Beaver Nation appreciates the effort. <laughs> That's a dangerous throw. Number nine, Chris Cisse, who's a very good defender. He's a transfer from Oregon. He can play football. And uh, but, but again, nice job by Artavius Pierce, knowing that he's going to take the hit and catching the football and picking up a, you know, a big first down. And yeah, Cissé's that guy who's teammates with Oregon State's Thomas Tyner on that team. Into the game now is Daryl Gerritsen. And the coaches told us they would do this. Gerritsen's a good runner with the ball. Gerritsen near the goal line, but he's gonna come up short, about a foot. So Daryl Gerritsen, who started last year and his season ended on an ankle injury against Utah now he's the mentor to Jake Luton, but they said he's going to get in. They put a package in for him. Well, not only is he the mentor, he's really the change of pace for this offense. They, they wanted to bring in a faster quarterback because the, when you run a zone read offense, your quarterback needs to be able to run fast for your linebackers to respect that. Well, when number 10 is in the game, you have to worry about him running the football. Second and goal. No. Touchdown. Well, again, this is the zone read. You got to respect Tyner on the reverse. You got to respect Noel on the inside. You got to respect Dale Gerritsen running the football. And it's it's tough to defend, especially in the goal line. Jordan Shukare now chance to put Oregon State in front. Remember that Portland State missed its PAT, and Shukare is true right down the middle. A very impressive answer after Portland State scores in just over a minute. Oregon State does it the old-fashioned way. 13 plays, 81 yards, 6 minutes and 8 seconds, and Ryan Nall rings the bell.
Back in Corvallis on a hot day, it's the Beavers' home opener. And Oregon State answers Portland State's opening touchdown with one of their own. Buick scoring drive, impressive numbers, Jeremy. And that's exactly what they needed. I mean, for, for Portland State to go down and score the way they did, a couple big plays, you didn't want the mentality at Oregon State to say, here we go again. You know, just like last week, methodical drive. Everybody participated and contributed. It's a great way to answer from Portland State touchdown. Gary Anderson challenged his team, had some strong words. You talked about that Monday press conference. He was animated, and he said, I got to pull back before I really start getting angry. Khalil Dawson, two yards deep, lost it in the sun, and he's going to have to take a knee. Remember, early start, 11 a.m., so that sun is right over the east rim of the stadium which isn't full today a couple of different reasons of course it's hot school is not quite in session that'll be next week and it's a holiday weekend some of the kids have already moved on to campus and i think a lot of curiosity about how oregon state is going to come back from last week and also some people driving down from portland because the vikings played so well in their game at byu they were in that game late in the fourth quarter Eason's good so far, two for two, the touchdown to Kraft, and Delmopea caught, caught the first pass. They go from the Wildcat. They move it out across the 30-yard line. Well, one of the things that defensive coordinator Kevin Clune for Oregon State said that they need to improve on from last year is communication on this defense and you can already see early on this game Portland State's offense their offensive coordinator Steve Cooper throwing in a lot of different wrinkles a lot of different looks different quarterbacks and try to get them off uh, their you know onto their back foot and there's Kate Smith with the carry now Eason back behind center hands it to Turbo Williams Antoine Turbo Williams one of the fastest guys on the team but he got spilled in the backfield for a loss let's go down to Cameron well, guys, you just mentioned that they were in that wildcat formation. I went to Portland State's practice just a few weeks ago, and they lined up like that several times. I asked Bruce Barnum about it, and he said they have so many great athletes at that quarterback position. It allows him to move them around. Guys, you be likely to see that some more today. Eason from the pistol now. Carlos Martin is behind him, but he ignores him, throwing down the stripe. Receivers out of bounds and then got chucked. Well, that, that's pretty aggressive defense there by number five, Xavier Crawford. I mean, that, you know. Crawford sending a message? <laughs> I mean, if that was a catchable football, it wasn't because it was too far down the football field, but if that was a catchable ball, that would have been pass interference. Xavier Crawford, a leader on this defense, seven tackles last week against Colorado State and a very good coverage guy out of Pittsburgh, California. Teron Brad Bradford is back now. Hayden Cowden, pretty good last week. A 48-yard average now. It was at elevation, but several of his kicks were directional, and he wasn't going for distance. His best kick last week, he had a 70-yarder that just trickled into the end zone. Bradford pointing out that this ball is going to land short. Nothing he can do with it. It's going to die at about the 23-yard line. And that's where Oregon State will start its second drive. So Portland State gets the early touchdown. Kraft beating the defense deep, but Oregon State answers back with a mafop.
our football quadruple header continues. There's a lot of hype around the Trojans, of course. They're going to prove it's more than just buzz. Number four, SC taking on Western Michigan. And at 5.15, new head coach Willie Taggart ready to make an impression at Autzen Stadium and cap off the night with a battle in the Grand Canyon State. Can Rich Rod's cats send the Lumberjacks packing? Coverage continues all day long on the Pac-12 network. Well, the temperature is over 80, but by the time Oregon plays, it's going to be about 99 degrees down at Autzen. First play of the drive here for Oregon State. That's our first look there at number 39, Bo Duranslet. He's really the leader of this Portland State defense. Very good football player. He's a senior. 11 tackles last week against Colorado State. He's got good eyes. He's a fast, he's, you know, 200 pounds. He's a fast linebacker. He can run with anyone. Dahl back in the game. Three receivers to the left of Jake Luton. Including right in the slot is Tongi Ai, the tight end. They haven't gone to him yet. They go to Null, stutter step around the first guy. A pretty good game when it looked like there wasn't much there. The more I watch Ryan Null play, the more impressed I am. Now, everybody keeps calling him a fullback, but he says, I'm quicker than that. I have better moves. I know. That's the, the same thing I thought last week at Colorado State when I was watching him play. He doesn't look like he's that fast. He doesn't look like he would be that quick, but he is blazing fast. He outran the entire secondary at Colorado State. That's going to be short. They had to get to the 32. The hardest thing to do for the defenders of Portland State against his own read offense is to play with discipline eyes. Defensive coordinator Malik Roberson told us on our call with him this week, that's the number one key for this defense is to play with disciplined eyes. Just do your job, stay where you're supposed to be, and don't get faked out by the fake reverses and the handoffs and the runs and all the things that Oregon State's offense throws at you. That time they did a nice job. Nick Perebski, who's on the Ray Guy watch list, will kick for the first time today for Oregon State. Khalil Dawson back for Portland State. The pressure, soft roll to the right, nice kick. Dawson trying to shield his eyes, bobbles inside the 20, but now has a corner. He got to the edge and Oregon State finally holds him up, but it's a decent return. Let's go to San Francisco and a game break. Time for this Mitsubishi Studio update. We take you to North Carolina. Ross Bowers at his Cal debut connects with Vic Wharton III, and he's going to outrace the chase. 67 yards to Pater. This game just into the third quarter, and Cal trails 17-14. to 14. Jim? Pac-12 Network uh, showing four games in a row today to get you started on your college football season. And Jeremy, actually the Pac-12 Conference has done a good job against non-conference opponents so far early in the season. Again from the Wildcat, Smith. Got a better carry the first time. This time Oregon State is ready for it. Left side a couple of yards. Yeah, Cade Smith, he's a little bit of a change-up quarterback. In that time, Portland State really just tried to spread the field and get as much space as possible against Oregon State, but nice disciplined defense. Xavier Crawford again coming up to make the stop. Jelani Eason from Los Angeles, J. Sarah High School threw for 2,300 yards just a few months ago. Remember, he's 18. That's a tough ball on a slant. That's a free play because the defense was offsides. First penalty of the game. Lane Clark. Offside. Defense number one. Five-yard penalty. You play. Second down. Our referee today. That's Bryce Webu right there. The redshirt junior out of Take Katy, Texas. He had two sacks last week against Colorado State. He's great around the edge. Very strong guy. Has a good up and over move. And Katy is just uh, near Houston. This ball is thrown backwards. They were looking to throw again. Incomplete. They're going to call him down. Now they throw the flag. Dwayne Williams is there for Oregon State. There is no foul for intentional grounding. Number 80 was in the area. Third down. 
So he did have a receiver. Turns out to be a smart play. <laughs> Dangerous, but, but really heads up play there. And I like the play call. Well, remember, we told you Kraft's a quarterback. Yeah, he, he was the, you know, the battling Jelani Eason for the starting quarterback. I love the play call. Steve Cooper being aggressive. Didn't work out. Those things happen. And a nice heads-up play by Josh Kraft to just throw it away and save about 15 yards. So it was second and two, and I was going to say this is a chance for Portland State to do something a little cheeky. They did, but now they find themselves in a third and two. Go right up the middle. And spinning for the first down is the big back. That's Jason Talley. This guy goes about 235 pounds. He's well over six feet. Jalen Moore with a tackle for Oregon State. That moves the chains. This is an Oregon State defense that's still looking for their first sack of the season. Zero last week, uh, zero last week against Colorado State, and you know they they've really been called out to say to play tougher up front. The linebackers throw some creative blitzes. They got to contain Eason in the pocket. Summers, nothing inside, and he bounced it once, bounces it a second time. He'll be short of the first down, but across midfield and near the 45-yard line of Oregon State, Manasseh Hungalu ran him out. Well, if you want to have success running the football, you need some help up front. And that time, number five, Khalil Dawson, had a great crack block on a pursuing linebacker that allowed him to hit the edge. Second and one. Mason keeps it. He didn't carry it a lot last week. Nine carries for nine yards. Just enough to try and keep the defense honest. Yeah, but the coaching staff at Oregon State saw his speed, his quickness, and this is what he can do. Again, misdirection. Both these offenses do a phenomenal job in misdirection. And Jelani East has got enough quickness to, to find the hole and pick up the first down and continue this drive. Portland State doing a great job moving the ball. And remember, this Oregon State defense gave up 58 points last week, most in school history in a season opener. Not a record you want to set out of the gate. Portland State scored on three plays to start this game. Elio Iden with the tackle for the Beavs. Elio Iden. Big kid, 345 pounds, six foot three, red shirt sophomore. He is tough to defend as the nose tackle. Just over a minute to play in the first quarter. Second and five. Ball resting at the 32 yard line. Eason looking to his right the whole time. Knocked away. Well played. Crawford right there. Xavier Crawford. Jumps the passing lane. Nice break on the ball here by number five, Xavier Crawford. Oregon State dials up the blitz. Portland State picks it up well, but Xavier Crawford right there for the pass breakup. They're trying to go to Deshaun Parsons, and if you're going to throw it to Parsons, throw it high. He's 6'7". Another third down conversion. Last year they were under 50%, which ended up third in the big sky. This Portland State team has picked ninth in conference coming in. Eason keeping it. He's going to be short of the first down by about a yard. This will be an interesting call here to see how aggressive this offense is, is going to be on fourth down. And uh, my assumption would be that they would go for it. Long field goal from here. See what Bruce Barnum does? They call it Barney Ball, and it's a combination of about three different things on the West Coast offense. Guy's got no fear, though. He's going for it, and why not? Lower division school playing on national TV against a Pac-12 school. They go for it on fourth. It was a high snap. They barely got it down. Eason, a great job to get it to his running back and a first down as Tally got the handle and fell forward. Well, that, that's just a great job by the offensive line for Portland State. Corbin Sorison, Justin Outslay, right tackle and right guard, pushing the defenders out of the way and giving a nice crease for a first down. Titus Unga was there for the tackle for Oregon State, but he got dragged about a yard after contact, and that was enough. Another first down for the Vikings. 
of Portland State. Whistle stopped the play. Hence the quarter. So after one quarter, I don't think Beaver Nation feels much better about the way things are. Maybe a little. Josh Kraft got loose for a touchdown on the first drive of the game. Oregon State answered back a long drive capped by Ryan Nall. 7-6 Beavs. Used to have metal bleachers on the far sideline. Those are the days with uh, Hushman Zada and Chad Johnson and Kenny Simonton, Jonathan Smith. Dennis Erickson was here and then Riley, of course, for all those years. And now it's a whole different game here in Corvallis. It's big time football. Knocked away, well played defensively. Jalen Moore, the safety from Denver. And a team-high nine tackles last week at Colorado State. Yeah, nice job getting pressure on Eason here. And, and another good job by Eason getting rid of the football and not throwing an interception, putting it only where his receiver might have been able to catch it. And Eason seems to be a little sharper than he was last week. He was under 50% at BYU. Tenth play of the drive. They've moved 42 yards from their own 33. Summers spins out of the first tackle. And Saquon Summers, who had... 20 carries last week for 55. Remember, he already had a big 26-yard carry on the first drive of the game. Third and three, so Portland State brings in its big back again. That's Jason Talley. But they also have two receivers to the right side and a flanker. Eason tried to keep it. Got caught on the handoff and just has to fall out and Oregon State picks it up. And it looks like Jalen Moore came up with it. And that'll be a turnover for Oregon State. Jalen Moore, two big plays to stop that Portland State drive. Well, we, we mentioned it last week, Oregon State, five turnovers. They knew they could they had to win the turnover margin here. And just a heads up play here by, by Jalen Moore jumping on that. But, you know, if you're if you're Jelani Eason, he, he had the best shot to jump on that ball and, and, and live to see a fourth down. But, you know, he's just a freshman. He probably hasn't done a lot of those drills where you're picking up fumbles. But the last thing you want to do is jump on it for your stomach. You want to you want to go to the side of the football and, and, and grab it and, and sit on it. He'll, he'll learn after that. But big play for Oregon State. Yeah, he put it in too far on tally. Couldn't get it back out. Ball pops loose. Thought he was going to jump on it. Oregon State knocks him off of it. And Jalen Moore with the turnover for the Beavers, and now they start at their own 29-yard line. So good stop for Oregon State. And overall, I would say it's a much better effort by Oregon State. But last week, they actually started really well against Colorado State. Remember, they led that game. It was tied at halftime, and they were still in it with 10 minutes to play. They're, they're going to review this, this fumble to make sure that Jelani Eason didn't have possession of the football when he jumped on it. We'll take another look here. You see the ball pop out. Jelani East is going to go jump on it. Now, did he have control of this football right there before it popped out? I don't think so. I think this goes five hole on him right between the wickets and rolls out the backside. This would be a better angle on it, right? Here. Yeah, I, I don't think he, he demonstrated possession there. Gary McNana, the, the official replay guy will be looking at this here at, at Oregon State and making a decision and all replays can go back to Pac-12 headquarters but ultimately it will be Gary's call. Back in San Francisco centralized replay this year helping out the officials on site Lane Clark the referee now talking to the replay official here at Research Stadium and then listening in back in San Francisco yeah, I think that was a fumble. Is centralized replay. Now those guys in San Francisco will help if they have a better angle if they see something, they can advise. And it's all done in cooperation. The idea, to get it right and to speed it up. And the Pac-12 conference has done such a great job through the years with replay. They're the fastest conference in the nation getting a decision back on the field, which is important for players and tempo and fans. All of us enjoy that. So, it, And there's a dichotomy because people say you got to get it right. But then people say we don't want to stand around and we don't want three, three hour and 45 minute football games. Yeah. Gary Anderson talked about creating turnovers creating sacks what's his number this year 30 and 30 he wants 30 of each they didn't reach 
30 of each last year. He's put that bar pretty high for his defense. And that's what you want to do. You want to set goals that are you know difficult to to attain and accomplish. But I think Jim, you know, we, we saw the replay. I think you're right. I don't think he Eason maintained possession. Last year, Oregon Not State's defense really had 18 sacks. Really, a fumble recovered by the defense this is confirmed. However, the ball was down in possession of Oregon State. The ball will be placed at the 19-yard line, first down. Yeah, and that's a good point because when Moore grabbed the football, he was on his knees, right. so he's down. The call didn't just stand. It was confirmed, a fumble. You see the numbers that they had the 18 sacks and only 20 turnovers last year and you know Gary Anderson is a defensive guy that's how he made his bones remember he was a defensive coordinator and defensive line coach back at Utah and then he went to Utah State as a head coach and was the WAC coach of the year we asked him yesterday you know are you still involved with the defense and he said I'm you know this year I'm stepping away I'm trying to be more of a head coach defense coordinator is Kevin Clune he says I'm comfortable with him he does a great job for us after the 43, in and out of the hands of the receiver. Well, that, that was just great coverage down the football field. Number 29, Donovan Alumba. Number 9, Chris Cisse. These guys are good co cover guys. I mean, Tyler Foreman, this secondary is very good for Portland State. Oregon State's coaches talked about it all week. These guys are hard to get open on. That time, they did a phenomenal job. First throw to Jordan Villeman and Alumba had a great game last week, and this is a guy who used to be on scout team for Portland State. In fact, Alumba, you know, when he was in high school, he was trying to get people to look at him, and Alumba went to a place called Alderson Broadus, which is in West Virginia, a lower division school to play football. He originally comes out of Tucson. He wanted to get back to the West Coast, so he sent a tape to Bruce Barnum and said, I want to come play for you. And Barney says, look, I only have 63 scholarships. I don't know you. Your tape looks good. Come play for us. He's still not on scholarship, and he's starting. Opposite of Chris Cisse, who's getting looks from the NFL. I love that story. An entrepreneur in the making. I mean, he wasn't going to wait for somebody to give him a chance. He wanted to play here, and so he called the coaching staff and sent a tape. Sam Bodine with that last tackle for Portland State. Look, when you only have 63 scholarships and their budget is about half of what it is for a school like Oregon State, you got to be careful. You can't miss. Isn't that what he told us about Jelani Eason? He said, look, especially with a quarterback, I just don't have the scholarships. I've got to be sure. So with Jelani Eason, he watched every one of his high school games. And he said, we didn't have clipboards. We didn't have anything. We just opened a soda, sat down, and became fans. And we offered him. He's now the quarterback. 7-6 Oregon State. 13 minutes to play in the first half of the home opener. Oregon State leading Portland State 7-6. Both teams lost in week one. Oregon State 58-27 at Colorado State in a game that was much closer than that. And 300 yards passing from Jake Luton. Ryan Nall had 115 yards, but five turnovers 
in 15 possessions scuttled any chance. And for Portland State, they lost also on the road at elevation, 20 to 6 at BYU. Oregon State to punt. Khalil Dawson is back for Portland State. He really hasn't had a chance. And here he signals fair catch, surrounded by a host of beeves just short of the 35 yard line. Games like this, you hear announcers say it all the time, the longer you leave a team like Portland State in the game, the more their confidence grows. But when they rolled out of Portland on that bus this morning at 6 o'clock, they were already feeling pretty good about themselves because they took BYU to the wire last week. Well, it's clear that they feel good about themselves, and they came to play today. And I've been surprised so far with their, their front five. Those offensive linemen for Portland State, they've been dominating the line of scrimmage. And they're going against some pretty good defenders on the other side, both at the linebacker position and uh, on the D-line. D and this guy, Bruce Barnum, we had so much fun chatting with him this week. I mean, th th he, he reminds me a little bit. He's got the sense of humor of, of, uh, of Leach. You know, that, that's the type of, of coach he is. He really keeps it loose on the sidelines for these guys, which is important, especially when you have such a young quarterback in Jelani Eason, true freshman. So he likes to have fun. He calls it Barney Ball. He's joking around all the time with, with, with players and, and, and coaches. And he said, hey, football is a fun sport. We can't take it too seriously. Yeah, he is a blast. He was, he's been there for eight years. He was on the staff. And then when they fired their old coach, they moved him in as interim. And he, and he beat two teams at this level. He beat Washington State. He beat uh, North Texas. And they immediately turned around and gave him a five-year deal. Manasse Hungala, the tackle. Uh, yeah, Manasa Hungala, that, that's really the heart and soul of this defense. Nice open field tackle. If he doesn't make that tackle, uh, he might, may still be running. But he's a senior out of Hawaii. Had five tackles last week against Colorado State. And he makes the calls, and he really inspires these guys on defense. Hungala last week, only five tackles, but he's capable of much more. It wasn't his best game. Tally saw a pile in front of him, slides to the left. Cross midfield, first down. Jalen Moore eventually made the tackle for Oregon State. That's pretty incredible how they're moving this football. Again, up front, the, the big lineman. Uh, Tyshawn Mosley, the left guard, doing a good job there, making a hole. And, you know, Oregon State's going to, you know, if you're Kevin Clune, the defensive coordinator, you need to do something to stop this, a little bit of this offensive bleeding because they're moving the football at will. And again, they go for the Wildcat. Kate Smith now at quarterback. Last two times he's been there, he's kept it. This time he should have given it to somebody. He's going to lose a couple of yards. Manasse again. And he had to chase him for this one. Yeah, they come out in the Wildcat offense here. And, you know, ni nice defense from, from Oregon State, staying at home, staying disciplined, making sure that the edge was covered so that he couldn't get outside and turn the corner. One receiver to the left, two to the right with a flanker, Summers, nothing. Got back to the original line of scrimmage. Third down and 10, maybe a little more. Just when I said that Portland State's offensive line was controlling the line of scrimmage, Oregon State steps up. And that's, that's the type of defense that Beaver fans are used to seeing. Big smothering defensive linemen controlling the line of scrimmage, linebackers coming up, making plays. Right at Guebu with the tackle for Oregon State. The guy we talked about earlier out of Katy, Texas. So you know his mind is in two places with family back in the Houston area. Hurricane Harvey. Finally, the waters have receded in Texas. Easton to throw on third down. Going down the right side and nobody there out of bounds. And Portland State's going to have to punt at midfield. Now that was Xavier Crawford there again on coverage, the cornerback for Oregon State doing a nice job on the sideline, just not allowing the receiver to get any space. And it push, actually pushed him out of bounds, and there was nowhere to put the ball for number 10. Yeah, that time he put a great move on number 49, on Jay Hughes-Murray, made the inside linebacker miss, picked up some extra yards. And this is exactly what Portland State needs at this point in the football game to go down and try to get some points. Trips to the left, now they bring the tight end in motion. Eason keeps it himself, he's got space, he's got a first down. Eason still on his feet, to the 10, the five, and at the goal line, just short. Jelani Eason, his best run as a collegian, and Brandon Arnold saved the touchdown. 
give him 40. What a, what a move here. You're going to see some. First of all, you got to read the defensive end on his own read. Perfect job. Now you're going to make him. Uh, he's going to make a bright miss and another safety miss and almost takes it down for the touchdown. That's the explosion that Portland State's off. Oh, goes through his hands. Scoops it up, and now it's just a jailbreak, and he runs out at the 11-yard line. They were going to tally, and the snap was well high. And just went right through his gloves. Did a good job, though, not to panic. Scooped it up. Yeah, David Morris a, ran him out. This, this is just a high snap from Chad Bach, number 72, the senior out of Bend, Oregon. And as you mentioned, Jelani Eason does a nice job of not trying to do too much there. Just take it out of bounds, live to see another day. It's only second down. Poor centers, we usually don't even mention their name until they do something wrong. He's been doing a great job up front. Making the calls and blowing open some holes because their, their ground game looks pretty good so far. But now they find themselves in a second and goal. Summers dances to the right. Summers wrestled down by Dwayne Williams. Dwayne Williams from Colleen, Texas. A couple of tackles last week. Last season, he only played about half the year, five games. He had a knee injury. And on third and goal, just outside the five, this is where misdirection is your friend. Spread out the field. Try to try to get the linebackers in space, out of fits. And put it in the hands of your playmakers. Andre Petty's Wilson is out there. They have three receivers to the right. And he's keeping it. Eason. So maybe they're thinking yeah. four downs, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. Andre Hughes Murray like. with the tackle for the Beavers. Yeah, I think I think Bruce Barnum was just saying, we're going on fourth down anyway, so I'm going to get it as close as I can. And then they're going to bring in Tally. Yeah, the only thing is you missed that extra point though. And and you know, so a field goal here would would get you back on pace to stay ahead of the points. Well, Noah but, Bozio missed the PAT today. He missed his only kick last week, so maybe they just don't have the confidence in him right now. Yeah. And, you know, Portland State knows they're going to have to score some touchdowns to win this football game. So here we go, fourth down. This is a defining moment early in this football game. They converted a fourth down last week and several third downs. They were good in this situation. I'm going to call a timeout. Yeah, there was some confusion there. You can see Eason, he went to the line of scrimmage, turned around, looked over at his coaches, and they didn't really give him much. So you burn the timeout. That's a good timeout here. Obviously, it's a critical play. Chance to go in front. Gary Anderson trying to pump up his defense. Well, he said he was going to stay away from the defense, but he can still throw in his two sets every now and then, can he? Well, he, he needs to do whatever he can in every other coach because Portland State is moving the football at will against this defense. And for the second straight week, we're seeing an offense move the football against Oregon State's defense. And we got to keep in mind that, that Kevin Clune, the defensive coordinator, is in the booth today. And that was Gary Anderson's decision. He was on the field last week, and Anderson said, I'm going to switch it up, so he put his coordinators up. And so maybe Anderson says, I need to be that voice on the field. I need to get these guys' face and tell them how important this play is, yeah, you how know, important this game is. Oregon State's trying to create an identity for 2017. They weren't able to do it a week ago. This is a perfect moment to start that narrative and deny this touchdown. Fourth and goal. Portland State playing for the lead. Deep back is Carlos Martin. They throw on the flat. Incomplete. Well, I like the play call. Misdirection, pass, rollout. Kyle White on the coverage for Oregon State. Nice coverage by Kyle White. He got might have got there a little early. Portland State fans might be wondering where's the where's oh. the flag? You know, he, he wrapped that hand around, but he, he had his eyes on the football. Nice defensive play. Trying to go to A.J. Ruffin. Defense was playing zero across the board. Man coverage. You know, that that's dangerous back. That's when you sometimes see those 80, 90-yard touchdown passes. Garrettson stays in. Looking to his left. Lots of time, and he tucks it away and stumbles across the 20-yard line. Looks like we might have a holding call. Flag back at the 8-yard line. Back, 
personal foul, hands to the face. Defense number 93. A 15-yard penalty will be added at the end of the play. Automatic first down. That's John Jackson there, number 93, just getting his hands up there on the face mask. In hot pursuit of Daryl Gerritsen. That's the most costly penalty on either side today. So moves the ball all the way out to the 35. And remember, this started at the 2. So Oregon State has checked the first box. Get it away from your own end zone. Luton, again with good pressure. Lost one down the left side, not just the interference. Villeman, the intended receiver. He was grabbed and dragged down. Donovan Alumba was beaten on the play, and I think he just grabbed maybe to stop a touchdown. You know, some pass interference calls or behaviors are okay calls, and that, that's one of them because, as you mentioned, Donovan Alumba. Pass interference, defense number 29, a 15-yard penalty, first down. That that was a that that was a potentially touchdown saving penalty right there. I mean he he had a couple steps on him, and uh, Jordan Villeman, who's who's really Luton's one of his favorite targets, seven catches a week ago, big physical receiver, also fast. And that time Lumba did what he could to save a touchdown. Hand off and lots of space left side, inside the 30 yard line. Travoris Johnson. This guy played at TCU before he came to Oregon State. And find it a way to, to get on the football field. Well, be, between him and Nall and Artavius Pierce and Thomas Tyner, they certainly have a lot of talent in the backfield. Tyler Foreman ran him out, but it's a first down. And Oregon State's got their best drive of the game going on. Circling back is Nall. Strong, quick, and elusive. And he's able to get a couple of yards when it looked like he was going down in the backfield. Yeah, that time in Antonio, or Anthony Del Toro, number 98 for Portland State, had him wrapped up for a loss but couldn't bring him down. Sam Bodine eventually for Portland State. See, Nall now has moved up in front of James Fields. He started below Fields today, so he's now number 15 all time on the Oregon State rushing list. A lot of good guys on the list. Stephen Jackson, Kenny Simonton, Quiz, Quiz Rogers. Luton's been getting all the time he wants. Tongye. Tongye, the tight end, who had a big game last week. We expected him to get a lot of looks. That time, good job just setting his feet for Jake Luton in the pocket. Plenty of time to throw the football. Finds big 81, Noah Tongye. He had the touchdown reception last week against Colorado State. Tongye is really quick for a tight end. He's got to be tough to cover. Aluba was on, on the coverage. Come right back up the middle with Ryan Nall inside the five-yard line. Kevin McGiven, the offensive coordinator for Oregon State, said that Noah Tongyai is, is basically the heart and soul of that offense. Everything is centered around him, both from catching the football but also blocking in the running game. Yeah, and, and Anderson echoed that, too, even though it, Tongyai had seven catches last week. We brought his name up. He said he was the unsung hero in the running game because of the work he did. Second and goal for the four-yard line. Nalls in the backfield. Remember, we asked the Beavs yesterday, when you need one, why not just give it to Nall? How about Garrison keeps it and steps in for the touchdown? Well, that's a great call right there by offensive coordinator Kevin McGiven and so hard to defend for a defense you got to respect the reverse from Tyner you got to respect Daryl Garrettson's speed so they do a misdirection to the right come back and Daryl Garrettson walks it in Jordan Shuker with the PAT he's two for two today at Oregon State after giving up a touchdown on the first drive is stored back with two scores of their own so he fakes it to Tyner, fakes it to Nall, takes off to the left side. All the action going to the right, pulls the ball down because the defensive end and, and linebackers were pursuing the right on, on the right side fake and does a nice job walking the end zone. Don't forget, coming up at the break, and it's not far off now, it's the State Farm Halftime Report. Guy Haberman and the gang in the studio back in San Francisco. They're thoughts on the first half as they break it down. Cal and UNC, they'll break that one down, show you some of the tape. Clemson and Penn State also. A lot of people loving Penn State this year. 134 yeah. to play here at Research. 
Well, go, going back to Daryl Gerritsen, this is a guy that lost his starting job, you know, to, to the transfer Jake Luton that came from Ventura Community College. And usually when that happens, you can kind of disconnect, but he, he hasn't done that. He's been a big cheerleader for the team. He's been a mentor to Jake Luton, and now he has his own package in, in this football game against Portland State and scores a touchdown. Just phenomenal to see a guy like that who's been so pivotal in so many different areas for this football team get in there and score a touchdown. Dawson back to the 23 for the Vikings of Portland State. The drive by Oregon State, eight plays, 98 yards, 335. Just the fact they started on their own two-yard line and drove the length of the field, that's a big one for them. And, and remember, Anderson told us that when they put this package in for Garrison in the offensive meeting, he walked in and said, I just want everybody to know that Jake Luton is our starting quarterback. Daryl Garrison's going to play. We're putting a package in for him. But he said, Daryl, you understand Jake's the starter. Everybody in this room understands Jake's the starter. And I think most importantly, he wanted Jake Luton to know that he was the starter. Yeah, we, we talked about, hey, is Jake Luton on any type of leash? Could, could Daryl Garrison get started? The answer was emphatically no. It, this is Luton's, Luton's job. But Daryl Garrison definitely gives him a changeup. Summers. And it looks like a conservative play, but Summers has been able to find some space. Savea. Paisa Savea with the tackle for Oregon State. You know, I, I looked at this clock with over a minute to play, and Bruce Barnum, you know, he's kind of that riverboat gambler kind of coach. I was going to ask you, would you try to press it right here and try to get something before the half ends? Yeah, I think you always have to remain aggressive. And, you know, this is an offense that, that prides itself on being a 50-50 run pass offense. But, you know, with, a, with 59 seconds left in the second quarter, I think what you're going to see them do is just try to, you know, run out the clock. But Easton's, been, Easton's like. thrown the ball pretty well today, and his receivers have done a nice job getting open. And Markham Melo with the tackle. Oregon yeah, Oregon State is going to take this because they want to force yeah. Portland State into a punt you, and maybe, maybe a, a, a mistake. Yeah, if you get too conservative here with 47 seconds left, Oregon State's got another timeout, so if you hold them here on third and two and they have to punt, you'll probably get the football back with 35, 32 type of seconds, and, you know, Luton can wing the football, and they have speed on the outside. We haven't talked about a couple of the receivers, guys like Trevin Bradford, who is a speedster, just a freshman out of Oregon City. Jordan Villeman got open on that, uh, that deep pass that had the pass interference. So they got weapons to score quickly. Sunday, catch a brand new episode of Sports Report. Join Mike Yam and Ashley Adamson as they break down all of the major stories from the Conference of Champions. Sports Report, Sunday at 8.30 on the Pac-12 Network. 501 national titles for the Pac-12 Conference, by far the most in the country. A little flea flicker here. Eason going to throw into double coverage. Intercepted. Brandon Arnold. And this is even better for Oregon State. They're getting the ball back quicker. They don't burn the timeout. And they're across midfield. <laughs> I love the play call. You know, it, it, it didn't work out, but for third and two, you think they're going to run it, try to get the first down. They, they call up a flea flick flicker, but very disciplined defense by Oregon State. Like, wh why practice it if you're not going to put it in a game? This is Barney Ball. They're coming down here. They needed something after that opening drive. Portland State had a second drive that stalled inside the 10. They needed something. They needed an uptick going into the locker room. They went for it, and it backfires. And now Oregon State, a chance to hang more points on the board before the break. Luton back in a quarterback. Johnson's still in there. He's out in the flat, but he's looking downfield all the way. Knocked away Alumba. Well played. Donovan Alumba. Like, they picked on him last week. This is a guy we told you before, a walk-on. He was well, on the scout team last year, so they're going to test him. You can't cover any better than this. You know, I look at his eyes, back to the ball. Hits it right as it's coming to the receiver. And Villeman's fast, so that shows you the speed that Donovan Alumba has. Chris Cisse on the opposite side, of course, is getting looks from NFL teams, so you'll stay away from him. The benefit for Alumba is with NFL scouts looking in at CCA, they're going to notice Alumba. And what a great story. That would be a guy who was a walk-on, had to send a tape to a lower division school. Johnson 
Short gain inside the 45, wrapped up quickly. Guys are jacket first guy there for Portland State. And Oregon State burns that timeout they, they didn't have to use. There's Chris Cisse. Chris Cisse, remember the transfer from Oregon, played 20 games for the Ducks in 13 and 14, was a starter in the Rose Bowl and the National Championship game. <laughs> and that was that's playing Portland good, State. That's some pretty good experience right there. And, you know, he shows up on tape. You know, you watch the BYU game. You know, he, he oftentimes, these cornerbacks, they play zero coverage. So there's no help over the top. They're one-on-one -on -one with receivers. And when you're covering guys like Isaiah Hutchins and Jordan Villeman and even Noah Tungiai, th those types of, of, of big, physical, fast receivers, that's a tall task. But Chris Cisse so far and Donovan Alumba, they've been up. They, they've answered the call. And Alumba's certainly working for a scholarship, wouldn't you think? Absolutely. 17 seconds, third and three. So first things first, get the first. A little bit of coverage. It was behind Villeman. Incomplete. Curious call. Well, you know, you teach those cornerbacks that you have to look back for the football. That time, Alumba didn't. Yeah, got to get eyes on it, right? On the previous play, he did. And, you know, it's about 50-50 whether you'll see a pass interference call from, from a referee when a cornerback puts his hands on a receiver like that and isn't looking in the backfield. Dawson's back with 12 seconds. I don't know if I'd even let him catch it at this point. Timeout, Portland State. You saw Gary Anderson on the... Portland State, your second to ask. 30 seconds left. Well, you know, if you're Portland State going into halftime, only down by eight, this is this is a win for you. You're, you're in this football game. Your offense is moving the ball well. Your your defense is 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 containing their offense quite well. So you got to be feeling pretty good. You know, after last week coming home, you mentioned how upset Gary Anderson was. He used words like embarrassed, and it's never happened to him before. And he had this quote. He said, when "We asked about the players. I expect them to never forget the Colorado State loss ever in their life because I want I won't. Do we need to be more edgy? Yes. Am I? Yes. But I refuse to accept excuses. So." He was, he was pretty hard-edged all week long. He let these guys know how important this game was going to be. And there was a lot of other comments that we can't say on, That's right. on TV. <laughs> Football coach comments. He was pretty measured by the time we got to him. This ball is going to die inside the five. Hayden Cowden just getting some practice here. Runs down to one second, and then they let it bleed out. And will that be the end of the half? Stadium clock says nothing. Are they going to make Portland State snap one? Nope, that's going to do it. That's it for the half. So Gary Anderson picks up the visor, wipes his able to run the football. Vikings pile up 161 yards. It really was surprising. I mean, look at their you know, offensive line. He's quietly put up close to 100 yards of, of rushing. Yeah, 80, 86 yards for him and Ryan Nall for Oregon State. We said Oregon State had to establish their running game and get him going. He only has 33 yards. Yeah, he's got 11 carries, so he's on track to, you know, 22. That's the that's the right amount of carries for him, but they got to get him going. they got to give him space. they got to open up blocks for him. He hasn't had a lot to work with. Oregon State coaches told us they were going to play Daryl Garrettson at quarterback. Said it doesn't change who the starter is, but it did change the way Oregon State's offense attacked. Oregon State had two very long drives, an 81-yard drive and a 98-yard drive for touchdown. So that's the good news. The bad news is they get outgained overall. The turnovers also in Oregon State's uh, favor. Well, this is the one that stands out to me right there. That 161, the rushing yards. I don't think you know anybody predicted that Portland State would have that type of success running the football against Oregon State's defensive seven especially the way that they were called out last week when they played Colorado State. Now, last week they threw it 47 times and only ran 29. It's kind of skewed because the game got out of hand late, but you can see they're going run heavy. That was something that they emphasized during the week in practice. Jake Luton back at quarterback. Hands it off to Tyner. Thomas Tyner avoids one guy, breaks a second tackle, and then stumbles and falls out at the 33. Yeah, Thomas Tyner mentioned an earlier interesting story. He played at Oregon, 
had a couple injuries, ultimately quit football, was decided to move to Bend, Oregon to be a lumber broker before deciding to finish out his Second down and eight now for Gary Anderson and the Oregon State Beavers. Trying to get level at one and one on the season. They're at home next week against Minnesota. Kids will be back in school to be a different environment. Right now they're trying to muster some energy and get some traction going. 12th carry of the game for Ryan Nall. Now last week he had 100 yards in that first half at Colorado State, but they only gave him the ball five times in the second half. Ortez Manning with the uh, tackle. Manning's made two tackles already here. I think we might be having some audio difficulties. We'll try to work on that and get it straightened out. Luton's going to throw out the flat. It's to Null. That's the first down. Well, remember that we talked to Oregon State coaches, Kevin McGiven, offensive coordinator, and asked him, will you throw it to your backside of the backfield? Absolutely. Want to get the ball to Ryan Nall as often as we can. Perfect example there. He makes the catch, steps past the sticks, and out of bounds. Fresh set of downs here at the 44-yard line. Luton looking right, now comes back as he goes through his progressions down the middle. He's intercepted. <laughs> Bo Duranslet dropping back into coverage for the pick. And that's the leader right there for their defense, Bo Duranslet. Number 39 does a nice job in coverage. He almost baits Luton, staying behind the receiver a little bit, and then has that closing speed to step in front of the ball. Makes a nice catch. Nice grab to just change the pace there. Oregon State was setting a, a tempo and a rhythm and getting first downs and, you know, trying to put some points on the board in the second half. And Bo Duranslet says, not so fast. So Luton continues to learn on the job. Duranslet had 11 tackles last week at BYU, his fourth career game in double digits, and was named a captain by his teammates before the season started. Now you start to understand why. First to 10 for the Portland State Vikings. Just over the 35-yard line. There's Summers, who we talked about, had 86 yards in the first half. Let's go down to Cameron. Hey, guys, I got a chance to catch up with Bruce Barnum before his Portland State Vikings took the field for the second half. And he told me it is very difficult to be going against these two quarterbacks. He said it's a heck of a package, and he, it was something they were not expecting. He also told me their focus for this second half is to continue to slow the run. Back to you guys. You know, Cameron, we talked with, with Barney during the week, and he's hilarious. This is the third game I've done with him. He's always cracking us up, but I've never talked to him during a game. I'd be interested to see what he's like then. Look at this. Nice play by Eason. Weaves his way for a first down and out of bounds. Jalen Moore ran him out. That's called breaking the ankles of a defender. You're going to see Brandon Arnold come here and try to make a tackle, and, uh, and Eason just shows him that agility to make him miss, and... Get a nice first down. Didn't Barty say he coaches these guys through humor? You got to keep them loose. You got to make them understand. As he said, maybe a couple of these guys will ever have a chance at the NFL. Everybody else is moving on in life, getting a job. This time, Eason gives it up. Summers. Summers having a big day. Down to the 36-yard line right at the first down marker. Brandon Arnold with a tackle for Oregon State. Yeah, I think at some point, if you're the defense for Oregon State, you have to start to bring eight, nine guys in the box to start to defend this run. And outside of the, the long, deep pass to Josh Kraft in the beginning of the game, it, it's not like Portland State has been beating them with deep passes, but they're certainly gashing them in the running game. Summers had 26 on that first carry. Now he's got well over 100. They give it to him again. You can add two or three here. Well, lots of credit to the guys up front for Portland State. That front five is really moving the pile. It's really impressive to see something that I don't think we predicted to see, especially with how angry the defense for Oregon State was after Colorado State. We thought they were going to come out and play with a lot of emotion. And, you know, they've had some shining moments, but I think for the most part, Portland State has, has controlled the line of scrimmage. 
Again, they have trouble with the handoff. Throw it out in the flat. Well done by Eason. Not to panic. And he finds Andre Pettis Wilson, who happened to be right where he was when he looked up. Well, we, we saw a bad exchange in the first half have a big impact on, on their red zone offense. And, and this one's on... This one's not on center Zach Bach. This one's on J uh, Jelani Eason. He's got to catch that football. I think he tried to rush it too much of faking the handoff. And Chad Bach and Garrett Stauffer and Tyshawn Mosley, Brandon Cecilius. These guys all doing a great job up front. Justin Outslay, all the linemen for Portland State. They're going to go over 200 yards rushing at this pace. On this drive, Eason directing traffic throws. First down. Darnell Adams, first catch for Adams, got a touchdown last week. Well, again, impressive play here by Jelani Eason, just extending the play. That's what, if you're a fast quarterback, that's what you can do, and you make it so difficult on the defense because you have to cover those receivers for three, four, sometimes five seconds. Delivers an on-time ball with a lot of maturity. Darnell Adams, in his sixth year of eligibility, injuries in 13 and 16, so he's still at Portland State. Lots of room left side again. That's Tally inside the 10. Wow, Portland State is blowing Oregon State off the ball. Jalen Moore might have saved a touchdown. Yeah, we got a flag down on the field near the line of scrimmage. Right in the middle of things at the 20. Holding. And maybe Offense, that's why. Number 79, a 10-yard penalty. You play first down. When he stepped to the left side, it had all caved in, and, and now maybe you know why. Maybe there was a grab. I think he was working on Paisa Cervea, and I was wondering on the edge, if you watch number 92 here on the edge, he just gets turned so inside right there, and you can just see the grab. Because on that play, Paisa Cervea would have outside contain, and that time he couldn't get, get off because of the hold. Brandon Cresilius, the senior left tackle. So it changes things. Now it's first and 18. Tally. Down to the 25-yard line. Tally again the ball carrier. Picks up five down to the 25. Summer's coming back in. We got to take down to 13. And I think Portland State is going at this with it with a prudent attitude. With 18 yards. They've been able to move the ball running, so they start with a run. Now they bring Summers back in. Eason looked right, comes back to the middle. All the way down to the five-yard line. Andre Pettis wilson Jalen Moore again saving a touchdown for Oregon State. Well, that's just a great route by the junior receiver, Andre Pettis wilson to find the middle zone. That, that defense was in a zone. He found just the space perfectly in the middle of the field for Jelani Eason to throw him the football. Pettis Wilson played at TCU in 15 and 16. Just five games, decided to transfer and found a home. Portland State. It's a first and goal. Portland State's 0 for 2 in the red zone, and now they score. Jelani Eason. So it makes it 14-12, but you know Portland State's going for two. They're 0 for 2 on PATs this year, and they need the two now to tie. Well, just good blocking up front. We've been talking about it all game, just the dominance between the Portland State offensive line going against the big and supposedly physical defensive line for Oregon State. They certainly don't look very physical today. Hell yeah, Chuck. Now, now they are going to line up for the PAT. They were all showing two, and then they decided too early in the game. Noah Brosio, 0 for 2 in his career. Wow. And that is just hard luck. And you just feel for the kid, don't you? You got to hang in there, young man. It's college football. It's not easy. Jelani Eason, another big drive for the Vikings, down two. <laughs> うん。遠国で合同授業。はい。ICTで教育が整えば人が育つ。人が育てば町が育つ。俺はそう思うから。すごいね。<笑> 
NTT 西日本の ICT でその挑戦をご一緒にこの町の教育を変えるんだえお兄ちゃんがうん遠隔で合同授業はい ICT で教育が整えば人が育つ人が育てば町が育つ俺はそう思うから<笑>すごいね NTT 西日本の ICT でその挑戦をご一緒に Here's that last extra point, and we think it's Paisa Savea right in the middle. Watch the big left hand come up, and bang, that kick is low, and he gets to it. That's why every play matters. Gary Anderson talked about sacks. He talked about turnovers. He talked about being more edgy. Are you seeing it? Well, <laughs> at times, I guess. At times. I guess you're, you know, you're seeing it. But. I think that's the right answer, at times. Chubinasu, kickoff for Portland State. Only back to the 10-yard line. Trent Riley, who's a wide receiver, comes in on their nickel package. And Riley gets down first and wraps him up. And the air is going out of this building. Oregon State's still in front, 14 to 12. They need an answer. ICT で言葉の壁を越えて世界に販路を広げましょう。もちろん大丈夫です。注文たくさん来てますね。マジかそな。NTT 西日本の ICT でその挑戦をご一緒に。
of the second half of Reeser, but you're just getting started. A quadruple header continues. USC taking on Western Michigan right after us. And then at 5.15, Willie Taggart down at Autzen as the Oregon Ducks get their season started. And then get Rich Rod and the Cats and the Lumberjacks back, and it all continues on the Pac-12 Network. Jim Watson, Jeremy Bloom at Reeser Stadium. A home opener for the Oregon State Beavers, but they're getting all they want from the Vikings of Portland State. Remember that Portland State has beaten a Pac-12 team before two years ago in Pullman. Took down the Cougs. Yeah, and on first down, we see quarterback Jake Luton, and uh, I think we're going to see another healthy dose of Daryl Gerritsen. I think that one-two punch at quarterback uh, had a lot of success in, in, in the first half. was really one of the things that, that had success when other, other parts of this offense had, had failed, but Daryl Garrettson, a nice first half. Yeah, concur. Toss it out to Null. Null trying to get to the corner, and he's wrapped up. Boy, the Portland State defense now is all fired up. Yeah. Artis Manning is having a good game, especially here in the second half. He's got three tackles since halftime. Yeah, that's the junior right there, number 24. Nice open field tackle. The defensive coaching staff said he's one of the fastest guys on this defense. Seven tackles last week against Colorado State. And makes a good open field tackle today. Coaches say Manning shows up in the biggest games. It's a pretty big game for Portland State, isn't it? Absolutely. Last week at BYU, six tackles, five of them solo. You're out there on an island. You're all by yourself. Garrettson, just as you predicted. Garrettson coughs it up, and Portland State has the football. Well, they had it at first. Yes, they're going to give it to him. Then there was a wrestling match. And now there's flags. Bo Duranslet. He popped it loose. There are flags, so hold on. Well, I think the flag came after the, the play was, was done. But again, you know, going back to number 39, we talked about him quite a bit in the first half. He, he is the leader of, of this defense, uh, Bo, Bo Duranslet. And, and he's just a complete football player he's, he's good in coverage you just saw right there he, he can create turnovers for you he's a smart football player he plays discipline he's you know you, it's tough to fool him for the zone read really not in the field is fumble recovered by portland state after the play unsportsmanlike conduct fumbling team number 81 his first of wow. the game a 15 yard penalty first down you know you know these no these eye you know, these, yeah, these are the mistakes that will get you beat. And, you know, going back to 2015 when Portland State pulled off the upset against Washington State and another Pac-12 team, these are the types of things that happened. It was a muffed punt uh, in the fourth quarter. It was a big interception. These types of things will, will make you lose football games. That's tongue eye right there. You know, he's just trying to push guys off to get to that football. I didn't see much at first look. You know, it was really 24 that that was responsible most for, the, for that that uh, you know, that fumble. Yeah, that's Manning again. Ortiz Manning came in there and just put a shoulder pad right on the football. Manning's been their best defensive player since halftime. And look at this: Portland State set up on the 13-yard line. Now Portland State has had two drives in the red zone, end up with nothing. A fumble. And a drive that just ended on downs. Eason keeps it. He's got a touchdown well, already. Fast. Jelani Eason, touchdown. So one play, and Portland State storms in front. Wow. Now I mean, that, that was just all Eason right here. I mean, this is backyard football. Where do you want to go? Left? No, not, not there. Let's cut it to the right. Let's cut it to the outside. Use my speed, agility. Get it in the end zone for six, and uh, there's probably zero doubt in anybody's mind that we're going to see a two-point conversion here after two failed extra points so far today for Portland State. Yeah, and another last week on their only touchdown at BYU. Have Carlos Martin in the backfield right next to Eason. They fake to Martin, and they give it to Summers. He's got plenty of space. Wow. And Portland State is having a day in Corvallis. Let's take a look at the Reese's go for two. 
Well, this is, again, just another beautiful misdirection. So effective inside the goal line. They fake it to the right. They fake it to the left and give it back to the right-hand side and just a wide-open green field for a touchdown. So they erase those missed PATs on the Reese's go for two, and Portland State leads Oregon State 20-14. to 14. おばあさんが小さな女の子を連れて立っていたので勇気を出して自分の席を譲りました。安心して素足と眠る女の子を見て嬉しくてつぶやくとみんなが温かい気持ちになれました。その気持ちがきっともうマナーです。私と誰かの
NTT 西日本の ICT でその挑戦をご一緒に。Travaris Johnson with a touchdown for Oregon State. Now he had limited action with TCU. He rushed for about 225 yards and four touchdowns. Had one year of eligibility left. So when he exhausted everything at TCU, he found his way to Corvallis. And he's had a heck of a game, and he's in a loaded backfield with talent with Brian Nall, Artavius Pierce, Thomas Tyner. It's going to be Dawson again. Just short of the 15 gets near the 25. Let's go. Hold on, there's a flag on the field. There's a flag out near the 30 yard line. Looks like it's a holding call. Here's Lane Clark. During the return, holding, receiving team number seven, a 10 yard penalty, first down, Portland State. Big break for Oregon State. Let's go down to Cameron. Hi, guys. I've got a special guest with me. This is Jake Knoll, the brother of Ryan Knoll. Now, something to know. You may look at his shirt and be a little confused because he was actually on the Portland State football team just last year. So are you feeling a little torn today? A little bit, you know. I wish I was out there playing my brother, but <laughs> it'd be fun to tackle him and shit. But. <laughs> Now, tell me a little bit. What are your thoughts on this game so far? We've got a tight one. Ooh, it's close. I, I want the Vikes to win, though. I can tell you that much. <laughs> the Vikes to win, but you've got the Beavers on your head. So tell me. Yeah, but. <laughs> as a brother, it's got to be pretty cool to watch your little brother oh. go out there and do some work. That's amazing. Here it is then. Come, up, come over the speakers every five seconds. That's awesome. Yeah. He's running the ball. He's helping. He's doing what he can for this team. So that's, but it's fun. Now, I got a chance to talk to Ryan this week. And I asked him, who wins in a race in the backyard? <laughs> what do you think his response was? Second and 12. I know he's going to say him. But I'll tell you, I'm a step quicker than him. <laughs> he did say him. And I, I don't know if you got him. But I no. think we'd have, we might have to set that one up. Right? No, he, he's got me by a step in that one, honestly. He's, he's a little bit faster. Just a little bit. <laughs> now, your family is out here. And you brought something to show us a little bit. Show us what oh, your yeah. family put together. This is what Mama Nal made. Mama Nal made this last, uh, it was about two years ago three years ago we were both on the sidelines of that game but you know what we were both playing against each other so that was fun <laughs> oh i love it definitely split right down the middle oh yeah right down the middle so <laughs> well we got a good one for you back up to you guys yeah i'm just wondering who got him the sideline pass did he get it did he get it from barney <laughs> portland state or did his brother get it for him because if oh, i get you a sideline pass you're wearing my colors that was good stuff summers has carried a couple of times here for Portland State, but now they find themselves in an important third down and eight. They need to get outside the 24-yard line for a first down. Eason, picked off. It's Manasseh, touchdown, Oregon State. Well, that's just what this Oregon State defense needed to turn the pace of this football game and get some confidence and hunger who just found himself in the perfect position that time jelani eason you know remember he's a true freshman threw the ball right to hungalu for the pick six and 
Extra point is good. And just like that, Oregon State scores twice in less than 30 seconds to go back in front 28-20. Take a look at the middle of the field right there. Reading the quarterback's eyes. And, and Jelani Eason's just looking at his quarterback to the right, staring him down, not looking at the middle of the field. And Hungaloo just steps right in front of that. Easy pick six for the inside linebacker leader of this defense. Well, it, you already hit it on the head. It's not only a huge play in this game. The defense needed something to happen. Gary Anderson has just been demanding turnovers from this team. They got it all in one play. Oh, yeah, the, the, the defense has just been whooped a little bit by Portland State, and they needed a statement play. Portland State came out of locker room and scored back-to-back -to -back touchdowns with Easton, the quarterback, keeping and scoring. One of those off a turnover, and Oregon State comes right back and scores two of their own. 28-20, five minutes left in the third. Dawson again, right at the goal line. Can't get back to the 20. Now Thursday, it's the season debut of the drive. Pac-12 football follow the Stanford Cardinal as they go to the land down under the drive. It's Pac-12 football Thursday at 5 o'clock on Pac-12 Network or watch on Pac-12 Now. Put down played Rice in Australia. Jeremy, you ever been to Australia? Never been to Australia. No, on the list. Go. It's awesome. And they really handled Rice 62 to 7, 650 yards total offense. Do they miss McCaffrey? <laughs> Not yet. And yeah, Stanford just seems like they're always just reloading talent. David Shaw is unbelievable. And we all we all know that the, the restrictions that recruiting Stanford athletes, you know, you gotta get into the school and and keep up grades and yet they compete at a high level every year so hats off to him Jelani Eason has grown up a lot just since last week but he made a big mistake moments ago Manase Hangalu with the interception 21 yards on the return pick 6, 28-20 Oregon State Summer standing next to Eason Throws out in the flat instead. Antoine Turbo Williams with a quick catch, but three Beavers are right there to knock him out of bounds. Xavier Crawford with the biggest hit. Take a look at the replay. Just a quick pass to the outside. It's a little bit of help from one of his receivers blocking downfield, and then he does as much as he can with a lot of Beavers in his face. You can hear that chainsaw they play over the PA. That's to remind the crowd it's third down and it's important. Got to build a dam. Third down and three, under four minutes to play in the third quarter. Eason under some pressure, able to find a man for the first down. Summers, who just got a curled out of the backfield, got past the sticks and turned around. Well, Zaquan Summers continues to have a, just a really nice football game, both running and catching the football, and that time Jelani Eason does just enough to extend the play and use his legs, get outside the pocket, and throw for, a, I think, a critical first down there to, you know, because a lot of the momentum right now is with the Beavers, and if they can put together a sustained drive here, go down and score, they could recapture some of that. Tally. It's forward across the 35-yard line. Portland State beat Washington State back in 2015 and did it by capitalizing on turnovers, trying to do the same thing here again. Portland State is a dangerous team, and Gary Anderson knew it. He knew his team had to respond after getting hammered to Colorado State 58-27 last week. Most points Oregon State has ever given up in a season opener. There was a lot of panic in Beaver Nation. Tally across the 45-yard line. That's another first down. And he was through that hole quickly. Yeah, just another wrinkle in Steve Cooper's offensive playbook. You're going to see a Zorro uh, reverse there, fake action. That that holds some of the linebackers, gets them to pursue that Zorro action, and then just wide open space for, for them to pick up the first down. A great seal there on the two-gap. I mean, that was a tunnel. 
First down out near midfield, 48-yard line for Portland State. Run a little option here was behind Williams. He had to hold up for it, and that killed the play. It's going to be a big loss. Back to the 43 where the late man coming on for Oregon State. Same alignment. Trips to the right, one to the left, and one guy in motion. Eason keeps it himself, trying to get in. They stack him up and hold him short and protect the lead. They hold on to Eason. They hold on to the lead. Let's take a look at Arisa's go for two. Well, in that two-point conversion, the offensive line gets a good push, but they just missed one very key block on Jonathan Willis, the linebacker, and Willis does a nice job dragging him down before he can cross the goal line to deny the, the Reese's go for two. Well played by Willis, who was one of the guys singled out last week. He played so well. In fact, Gary Anderson brought up four guys who played well last week, three on the defensive line, and then Ryan Nall. And they give out awards here. They call it a championship effort, a champion's effort if you're the best at your position and a winner if you're very good. They didn't have a lot of those handed out last week. You can understand it. Artavis Pierce is back for Oregon State. Chubinasu kicking off again for Portland State. He has been busy today. For Viking fans, that's good news. Remember that Pierce broke his last one all the way out to the 50-yard line. Pierce, this time they were able to get him early. Michael Thompson with the tackle for Portland State. Six seconds left in the third. The drive for Portland State was nine plays, 82 yards, four minutes and 46 seconds, and a 37-yard touchdown to cap it off. It only took Oregon State's offense two plays to score. Let's see what offensive coordinator Kevin McGiven has up his sleeve for this possession. We got Tongiai involved in that last one, running right down the hash mark. There's Tongiai short. And that had to be maybe his fourth read because he went through a lot of guys before he came back and found the tight end. Jacket with a tackle for Portland State. So Eason scores twice to open the third quarter. Johnson comes back, and then Manasseh Hangala with the interception return. 28. Proud. Long run. Flags down on the play. Well, we got to check this flag because there looked to be some good blocking downfield, but maybe some of it was a little too good to be true. Offense number 13, 10-yard penalty, second down. I was watching Jordan Villeman, the receiver, the junior receiver the whole time, and he was appeared to be having some great blocks down the football field. Offensive line does a great job opening the hole, and you see Villeman there on the left-hand side just getting too much of the defender. There it is right there, grabbing the back of the jersey of Donovan Alumba. Big-time, costly penalty. Just the third penalty on Oregon State. That was not a problem for them last week. But it was last year. Luton is going deep and overthrows his man. Just overcooked it. But the coverage was right there. Donovan Alupa. And that's the walk-on. That's the guy that was scout team. And he said, how good am I? Well, they keep trying to pick on him because, you know, the non-scholarship player. And on the other side, you got Chris Cisse, who is an NFL prospect. But... Alumba has stepped up any time that the Beavers have, have gone his way. And, uh, you know, that was probably an uncatchable ball anyway, but they were certainly doing some jostling down the field. Tino Allen, the intended receiver for Oregon State, first time he's been on the field today. No. Wrapped him up, and who was it? Manning. This guy's having another big day. Uh, between Artis Manning and Donovan Alumba, this defense for Portland State has done a pretty good job all day. 
playing fundamentally sound football and you know going back to the original you know what the keys of the game was for defensive coordinator Malik Roberson number one was to play with disciplined eyes that's exactly what we just saw from Artis Manning Bowden forced to his right soft roll keeps his chin up steps forward short of the first down but a nice play and there is a flag trailed behind him. Holding offense number 67. Penalty to decline. Fourth down. Yep. Yeah. Gonna bring up fourth as they decline it. It turned into a messy drive by Oregon State. Well, the, these are the mistakes that continue to happen that Coach Gary Anderson might just lose his mind because, you know, the, these are the mistakes that you just don't anticipate uh, your team to make in week two. Hayden Cowden on to punt for Oregon State. Khalil Dawson is back at his 13-yard line. Portland State's going to get the ball back. And a chance to go in front. It's a nice putt. Force him to make the catch looking up into that bright sun as he retreats inside the 15. The Portland State Vikings are right in this game. 28-26, Oregon State in the fourth. Pac-12 football is presented by Mitsubishi Motors, a century of innovation. And by Dr. Pepper, the one fans crave. And by 76, we're on the driver's side. Nervous Beaver Nation inside Research Stadium. Oregon State, the home opener, up 28-26. Oregon State was picked fifth in the north in the preseason poll. I think that's accurate right now. This is an Oregon State team that lost a lot, going through a lot of transitions, and is being challenged again by a lower division team. Meantime, SC, the big favorite, of course. Washington in the north, SC in the south. But remember, SC is coming up next at the Coliseum against Western Michigan. Colorado looked really good last night. Arizona State struggled first half. Looked much better in the second half of their game. You know, Stanford rolled Rice down in Australia. Well, that, that's exactly what the type of play Oregon State's defense needs from Baker Pritchard and the rest of these guys. 
blow up the plays in the backfield. They they haven't had a lot of plays where they've caused Portland State to lose yardage and and gain some more momentum inside the trenches of this football game. Portland State has had a couple of long drives. They don't show up in the scoring because they had a turnover at the 10-yard line and they ran out of downs at the 2. So that's why, if you were with us in the first half, you noticed that Portland State at halftime had outgained Oregon State. Especially on the ground, especially with Zaquan Summers. You saw him going off. There he is. Summers got over 100 yards today. There's that chainsaw again. It means it's third down. Third and nine. Big play for the Oregon State defense right here. Portland State is 30% today on third down. Eason has the protection, throws quickly, caught, first down. There he is again. Tamo Pea, the tight end. Well, that's just a heck of a throw by Jelani Eason. Oregon State that time only rushes three, all defenders in space. Charlie Tamo Pea finds the void in the, in the defense, which was pretty small, and Jelani Eason finds the, the, the window to throw the football in for a, a critical thir first down. One thing I notice with Eason is he's throwing the ball just a beat earlier than he did last week. Last week, and a young quarterback will do this, kind of wait for that receiver to come out of his break. Eason gets wrapped up. This would be a loss. But now he's trusting the play, and he's trusting his receivers. You were a receiver at Colorado. You should be, when you're coming out of your break and you look up, that ball should already be in the air, correct? Yeah, you, you know, when you come out of your break, you want to see the football halfway to you already. And so that, that timing comes with maturity with your offense and, and your receivers. Uh, but that time, again, Oregon State's defensive line, you know, doesn't go for the fake. They dominate the line of scrimmage, and they push Easton back. Looks like we have an injury. Yeah, Easton sits down. And he might be cramping up. He just got tackled by three guys, popped up right away, and then he kind of wandered around a little bit. He's shaken up. He wandered around by himself for a second. He looked over at the sideline and shook his head, and then he just sat down. So the trainers come out to look at him. Well, the, well you have a couple of different guys that could play. Josh Kraft, who's got two touchdown passes, number four. The other guy would be Davis Alexander, who's second on the depth chart, but hasn't played today and didn't play last week at BYU. So you see that Kraft last year was 60%. Well, and we've also seen number eight, Kate Smith, get some time. Take a look at this tackle here and see if we can see anything that might have gotten rolled up to, but tough to tell. Doesn't it's driven into the ground by three beef. Defensive players, he's, he's going to come off. He just doesn't look himself. You know, they talked about his maturity, his poise, that he's an old soul. He, he's played that way. You know, it's one thing for our coaching staff to say, yeah, you know, we got this young quarterback, and he's mature beyond his years, and, you know, he's a true freshman, and he's 18, you know, less than a year ago, he's playing high school football, but... You know, he, he, he makes the, the decisions that a quarterback should make when he's more of a junior or senior, and we've seen that. Barney said that. He looked at every game that Jelani played in high school and said, I just didn't see him make a lot of bad decisions. He's not the tallest guy at 5'11", so I can work around that. This is Davis Alexander, the backup quarterback, because they need Kraft at a receiver. Alexander, his first play this year is going to be a pass. It just misses his receiver's yeah. craft, and there's a flag that follows it. That was a pretty good play by, by Alexander. He rolled, found his guy right away, and delivered the football on time. Pass interference. Defense number four. A 15-yard penalty with an automatic first down. Dwayne Williams, the cornerback, called for the P.I. I like the play call. And look at the throw. I mean, he hits craft right in the head. You can't throw football better than that. And sometimes you get... You know, if for a quarterback who hasn't seen any action in the game, you come in, there's some jitters. If you have to sit back and pass, you get a little anxious. But rolling out, you kind of just go back to instincts. Now with the first down across the 40, see if they involve Summers again. They do. And if I can smell it out, you knew Oregon State knew it was coming too. Right, Uguebu with the tackle. Brought down immediately by Brian Uguebu. 
Yeah, we'll, we'll have to keep our eye on Jelani Eason. I'm sure Cam is down there trying to get the scoop. She'll report back to us when she knows. But it's, he, he's really been the difference maker in, in this football game. So I think a lot is going to hinge on, on what's going on with him, what the injury is, and if we expect to see him in this fourth quarter. And as important as this game is, of course, for Portland State, they have to keep an eye on their big sky schedule. They have a bye next week, and then they open conference play against Davis on September 16th. Turbo lost his helmet, held on to the football just short of midfield. You can see why he earned that name Turbo. He's so quick. He's that scat back. He can just, I mean, he laterally, he's so quick. He makes moves so fast. Key Wetzel finally ran him down for Oregon State. They like that jet sweep. Look at that. Cutting on a dime. He's already in motion when that ball is snapped. So he's full speed when he takes it. Get him to the edge quicker. He's off the field. Third down and four. How big is this play in a 28-26 game? Less than 10 minutes. Alexander still in there. The backup quarterback looking downfield. Throws short. Khalil Dawson wrapped up immediately. It's going to be fourth down. Key Wetzel again for Oregon State. Well, that, that's just a nice tackle there by Key Wetzel to save that first down. And it was a nice pass by David Alexander, the backup quarterback, coming in, rusty off the bench. bench. Oregon State's going to get the ball back. Trevon Bradford is back standing with his heels on his own 10-yard line. He shouldn't go backwards and field the ball. Hayden Cowden, Big Sky Special Teams Player of the Week, the punter. He drives this one inside the 10. Good bounce. Checks up. And they're going to pin Oregon State inside its own five. So it's a long field, but remember that Oregon State has gotten 98 yards on a drive before and scored a touchdown. Key Wetzel getting to Khalil Dawson to get Oregon State the football back. Beavs by two. Well, things have gotten interesting since we left you. Back in Corvallis, Hayden Cowden, the punter for Portland State, just pinned Oregon State back inside its five-yard line. Or did he watch his right knee? He had to move to his left and go down to get an errant snap. Almost like a shortstop. Does that yeah. right knee touch the ground? Sure you bet it like does. It. And if that's true, that's coming back. Well, he might not even know for sure. Bruce Barnum, Gary Anderson, both waiting to find out. Big call right here. I mean, this is a 50-yard difference. Mm -hmm. They are bringing this thing back. Mm -hmm. 
Oh, what an enormous break for Oregon State. Well, the kicking game has just been such an Achilles heel for Portland State. You know, all the missed extra points and now potentially a 50, 60 yard difference in, in the football game late in this football game. Two, two point ball game, 26-28. This could be bigger than the missed extra points. After review, the ruling is the punter's knee was down when he fielded the ball. Therefore, the ball will be placed at that spot. First down, Oregon State. Please reset the clock to 8.51. That's a 57-yard penalty. Instead of having it thrown five, they have it at the Portland State 38. Right knee. Clearly touches. Good call on the field. Good catch by the refs. Think Gary Anderson saw it? Maybe it came from the Oregon State sideline. I'm sure he would tell you he saw it. <laughs> well, you know, this this Oregon State team is just trying to grow up and, and they've been on wobbly legs since the season started. Gotta put the time back on the clock as well, 13 seconds. First things first, you got to get a victory. And then you prepare for Minnesota next week. Up by two, they get the ball at the Vikings 38 yard line. Garrettson back in on the. You know, it's not really a Wildcat. He's bringing in a different quarterback, a running quarterback. Yeah. Cisse with the tackle. It's more of a change of pace for this offense. Derek Garrettson, obviously a better runner, faster than Jake Luton, but he can also throw the football. You know, this was a tight quarterback battle between Daryl Garrettson and Jake Luton. Well, Darryl, Darryl Gerritsen started six games for Oregon State last year. He's got 17 career starts because he originally began his career at Utah State, had 11 starts there. So, you know, this isn't a rookie out there. This guy knows what he's doing. Grew up on a football field. His dad, Rick, a high school football coach. And you probably remember the name as that run goes nowhere. The name Gerritsen, of course, his uncle, an NBA official. That's Ron, and, and his grandfather is in the Hall of Fame as an NBA official. Daryl Garrettson, one of the great officials of all time. Yeah, and that time we saw 99, Devon Dodd come off the edge working against 73, Blake Brandle, and just won that battle to blow up that play in the backfield. Garrettson was a 50% passer last year, so here you go on third down and eight. He's got three guys to his left. Comes late over the middle. It's going to be short of the first down. Who do you think it is again? Hodgins. Yep. Bodine on the tackle, the coverage. That was well played by Portland State. Just keep it in front of you. Good job by Sam Bodine. Staying home in his zone. You know, Oregon State has had such success, especially on third down. This you know, last week against Colorado State. The time Sam Bodine saw it, he said, I saw a game game film from last week. Jordan Shukar is going to try a 51-yard field goal for Oregon State. Not going to get there. And off to the right. So Oregon State gets the ball at the 38-yard line after the review, but comes up empty and went five yards and missed the field goal.
later today after we release you from Reeser, send you down to the Coliseum in Los Angeles. Number four, USC, and Sam Darnold taking on Western Michigan. It's the season opener for the Trojans. USC got a lot of hype. Darnold nine and one last year as a starter. I mean, that guy turned that whole season around along with Clay Helton. It, it is going to be fun to see what he can do with, with another year under his belt. And, you know, the Heisman and all that stuff. Yep. He's got a lot of competition. Baker Mayfield from Oklahoma and Lamar Jackson from Louisville. Louisville and uh, JT Barrett. Guys like Jake Browning from Washington. Jelani Eason on the bench for Portland State was shaken up in that last drive. Remains on the bench with a towel over his head. So that means they're going to have to stay with Davis Alexander rest of the way down by two. Let's go to Cameron. Hi, guys. As for an update on Jelani Eason, I've been watching him over the last several minutes. What I do know is that they have evaluated him for a concussion. His return is questionable. But one thing I can tell you about Jelani Eason as I've been watching is this guy is still in this game mentally, even though he may not be physically. On the sidelines, he is clapping his hand when his team is struggling. He is excited when something else good is happening. This guy is still a leader, even as a freshman, and he is still absolutely in this game. Yeah, there's still a lot he wow. can offer. Darnell Adams with the catch. Big gainer by Portland State. And Josh Kraft is in there. Yeah, that's Josh Kraft. And you know, again, they, they, they had a really tight quarterback battle between Kraft and Jelani Eason. And, you know, just when Portland State fans might be thinking, gosh, Eason's down. And, uh, but, but Kraft is a senior. He's got a lot of experience. He's played quarterback before for this offense. He's played receiver. He knows it really well. And he's got a chance to do something special here. Alone in the backfield, five receivers. First down in Oregon State territory. Throws out wide. There's Darnell Adams. Second catch in a row. Cuts back to the 37 yard line well, this you might is, be thinking a field goal puts portland state in front but they don't have much of a kicking game they've made a kick this year field goals are not an option <laughs> but yeah th this is pretty fun to watch because josh Kraft, who is is a good receiver he's already caught a touchdown pass uh so far in this game and now he's playing quarterback just what a talented guy he is what a dynamic football player he is to be able to just not miss a beat on two plays after playing receiver all game and play quarterback same alignment. Five receivers. Certainly he knows the patterns. Brings the tight end into motion. Keeps it himself. Finds himself a lane. Cuts to the outside. Inside the 25-yard line. David Morris ran him out at the 23. What an exciting guy. I mean, look at the speed. Look at the burst. As you mentioned, him, he certainly knows the offense as well as anybody on this field. Follows his blockers. Picks up a first down. And he's almost inside the red zone. How about these Portland State Vikings? Got up at 5 o'clock in the morning, got on a bus, rolled down 5, come to Corvallis to play Oregon State, lose their quarterback. They got half the budget, and they have a chance to go in front, 23 yards away. Kraft threw it away. That was a great play. He didn't try to force anything. You know, a younger quarterback might have tried to force something in there. That time it was a great job by the defense of Oregon State had every receiver for Portland State covered up. Kraft says, I'll live to see another down. Remember back in the days when Boise State came out of nowhere and started challenging the bigs, and every time they pulled an upset, people were shocked, and we're not that way anymore. Fresno State used to do the same thing anytime, anyone, anywhere. Maybe the next great one would be a Portland State. Somebody right on the bubble there, lower division. Tally. Stumbles his way inside the 15-yard line. Another big gainer and close to a first down. It is a first down. Yeah, Jason, Jason Talley has showed really good vision running the football today. He's good with his cuts, you know, cutting to the outside, making a linebacker commit to the outside, and cutting underneath, making people miss, breaking tackles. Portland State has rushed the ball for 244 yards today. Camarpe goes in motion. He's going to block. Kraft keeps it. He's inside the five. And it's just big chunks of yardage each time on what appear to be simple plays. Now, there is absolutely no quit in these Vikings, these Portland State Vikings. And I think that they're showing that Jimmy mentioned it, their quarterback who's had a, a really fantastic game considering everything that has happened to him and how young he is. And he gets injured. Sounds like Cam thinks it's a concussion and Kraft comes in and just says, we're not going to miss a beat. Second down to one. They can still get a first down. 
Come up in motion again. Kraft keeps it himself. He's right at the goal line. He's not in, but it is a first down. They're going to have a first and goal at the one foot line. Three minutes left in the game. And see, so if you're Portland State, you're thinking, run that clock. We're, maybe you're happy you're not in yet. Yeah, that time Oregon State brings eight guys in the box and dials up a, a blitz. But, geez, Josh Kraft, his legs just don't stop moving. He's a tough runner. Under three minutes. And they're going to bleed all of it. They still have 15 on the play clock. Same play again. Kraft. Touchdown, Portland State. Vikings go in front. Well, that, that that might be the picture on the front page of the the Vikings newspaper down there, Portland State. I mean, that's right that's your Superman play right there, and you know, just just shows the desire that Josh Kraft has, and what a tough football player he is, what a dynamic guy he is to come in and again play receiver all all game and come in now as a quarterback and march the Vikings offense down the football field at a very critical time in this football game and and take the lead. Hats off. And now they have to go for two again. Summers is back in there. I don't know if he was on the field much during that drive. Kraft looks like he's playing, been playing quarterback all his life. And I guess he has. So Summers next to him. He was going to throw that ball. But they stopped it. False start. Prior to the snap, false start. Offense number 79, five-yard penalty, try for point. Marty says stay out there. Watch the left foot. There it is. It's a little twitch. It's all it takes. You tell these guys to get as big as they can, eat as much as they can, lift as many weights as they can, and then you tell them to go out and slam into guys for three hours, but... I need you to stop and hold still. <laughs> Back it up to the eight yard line. Two point conversion. Kraft is looking left. He's got time. In and out of the hands and it's intercepted. Right at Uwebo. Uwebo can take it to the house. Here comes Summers to drag him down and that's where it ends. But they deny the two point conversion. And so Oregon State can still win it with a touchdown. Well, let's take a look at this replay. It's actually a really good. It's our Reese's go for two. Yeah, Reese's good for go for two. And it's a really good pass. That is the only place that Kraft could have put that football. Receivers got to make that catch. And then a good hustle by Portland State. And nice heads up play. Yeah, and Kraft got in the way and slowed him down so Summers could catch up from behind it, yep. drag him down. Otherwise, Uguebu takes that back to the house. Portland State, the four wins against FBS teams. Remember, back in 2015, we told you about the Washington State game. They also beat North Texas that same season. And that's what got Bruce Barnum a five-year deal. They dropped the interim tag and said, I guess this is our guy. And he had been there already for five years as a coordinator. Well, for Jake Luton and Daryl Gerritsen and this Oregon State offense, this is why you play football. These are the types of situations, these are the types of games that you want to be in. Two minutes and 43 seconds left to go down and win this game. Chubinasu kicking off for Portland State. Artavis Pierce at the five. They need a good return to the 20 and steps out of the 23-yard line. Portland State's drive, nine plays, 67 yards, just over four minutes. And a touchdown by Kraft going over the top on the Superman. Chubinasu, good job he, as he pinned Pierce against that sideline. Makes the coverage easier. Portland State, we set it at the top. Oregon State trying to restart their season. Portland State trying to make their year. Oh, it sure would, wouldn't it? Here's Jake Luton. So Luton, you know, th this is a guy that a lot of people put pressure on. He played well the first week. Everybody wanted to see more. And now he's in a game-winning drive. Steps up, keeps his head up, throws. Oh. 
through traffic and finds his receiver. Looks like there's a flag right near the 30-yard sure line. Sure is. It's Hodgins. That was a dangerous throw. Any guess here? Take a defensive holding, maybe? Something to do with the receiver and the defensive yeah. back, but tough to tough to tell. Because it's about six yards downfield. It was an early flag. Offside. Defense number 96. The penalty is declined. Results of the play. Second down. All right. So they'll wipe it out anyway. Second down as he stepped out just in front of the sticks. Luton drops back. They have to be in a big hurry here. Just have to have some urgency. Go to Null. Good decision. Good blocking, and he got tripped up. Oh, my gosh. And the ball comes loose. Portland State says it's theirs. What are they going to say? They haven't signaled yet if he was down. Oh, now they're saying down by contact. Devon Dade staying there with a football in his hands. And what would be... Let's take a look at this replay. Almost assuredly victory for Portland State. Is his knee down? Elbow down, he's Elbows down. Elbow's down. No fumble. It's a good call. Oregon State lines up quickly. You got to figure it's going to be reviewed. They're going to hold this, aren't they? Unless they looked at it already and Pretty clear call. wave them on. Yeah, he was in the open field. Ball's right at the 45-yard line. Two minutes to play. Luton steps up, throws. Got his man inside the 40. Hodgins. Nice pass there. Now they're in the, the two-minute hurry-up offense. He practices every day at, at practice. Oregon State trying to pull it out of the fire. Luton looks right. Nothing comes back to the left. Wide open. No. Trying to juke him in in the open field. Drag down and out of bounds at the 31-yard line. Now the crowd is into it for the first time today. Well, for good reason. And that was a nice check down throw by Jake Luton and a good job by Ryan Null getting out of bounds to, to make the, the clock stop. But, you know, Jake was looking down field, didn't have anything open, and does a nice job checking down to Ryan Null. That was more reading than I did at seven years of college. <laughs> he looked at everybody. Tongue eye. And tight end. Short gainer. A touchdown puts him in front. Tough week for Gary Anderson. Offense number 67. 10-yard penalty. That's not over yet. Second down. Talked about cleaning things up, growing up, being more sophisticated. Yeah, and that's Trent Moore. Six or four, 300 pounds junior from Chandler, Arizona. And you know, we, we talk about how you can't make mistakes during a game, especially silly ones. Well, you definitely can't make them with one minute and 39 seconds left. Second down at 12. Good throw by Lord right at the stick. Tongue eye. Noah. Noah's, he's getting involved now. Yeah, as he should be. Noah Tongue eye, big target for Jake Luton. Four receivers in the pattern, trips to the left. 90 seconds to play in Corvallis. And we'll stop it here. Take a look at the replay here. And they talked about how Noah, as Oregon State takes a timeout, you know, he does a nice job running that out uh, route. That's why, because he bounces off of Manning, so he's not down until he hits the ground, which should be a first down. 